Thanks, Chris, for um, agreeing to have a chat to us today about some of the things you've done. Um, before we go too far, I'd like to learn a little bit more about what you've done in farming and why you've been in farming, a bit of your history. I know you've done lots of different things, so a short, brief outline of why you progressed to where you are would be good to start with. Well, we're actually butchers <laughs> by trade. Mm. Yeah. And in our previous life, before we were ever farmers, we were meat wholesalers. Yeah, we had, well, I was a meat wholesale until I was 55. Yep. And then we sold out of that and we went to Tyrone and decided we wanted to be farmers. <laughs> and I remember one bloke said to me, what on earth do you want to be farmers for? I said, well, I'm sick of making money. I want to find out how quick I can lose it. <laughs> 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 and, and as it turned out, some of that was right. Yep. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, we went out to Tyrone to retire. Yep. Um, we were there 15 years and loved it. But we learnt to farm and we learnt to farm very quickly. Otherwise your pocket will just break you. Mm. Yeah. What were some of the um, challenges you had in those first couple of years that you found? Oh, just everything. Yep. Everything was a challenge. Like we're not, we weren't farmers. so. We come with an open mind. Yep. And uh, yeah, and, and that's probably why we succeeded because we didn't have any negativity. Yep. We just, if it looked good, if it, if it added up on paper, we tackled it. Yeah. Hmm. And it worked, re worked really well for us. Uh, uh. I was only, the only regret I had was that I didn't find you fellas five years earlier than I had. <laughs> because in the last five years, we took our loosened production off the same ground from one ton to the acre to two ton to the acre. And instead of cutting it eight times a year, we were cutting 10 and 11. Right. And, and of course the economies of scale just, whatever it cost to, to get that product on the ground and the return was four times, four and five times. Five like times you, you're yeah. getting it back straight away. Yeah, but the longevity of it, the longer you used it, the better and better and better it got. Nah, I'm pretty sure that that's why we sold it. Yes. We put it for sale and we had numbers to back it. And uh, well, look at that last field day, we had people come from everywhere. They did. So we sold that and, um, and like we're 70 now and 80's coming quick. <laughs> so we, we, reckon, we reckon we'll, we'll kick back here. Yep. We've bought this little, this good, great little scrub block, and we're yep. just gonna, yeah, we're just gonna semi-retire here and, and trade a few cattle, and probably send a few cattle to feedlots, and yep. yeah. But this, this virgin bit of scrub soil we got here, like, it won't know what what hit it once I start getting some natural men into it. Yeah, yeah we'll, uh, you know, and I tell people my projections of what I want to do here. I know when they walk away, they think he's dreaming. I know. I say come back later. <laughs> it's yeah, been no. proven, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I, yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it. I never forget, right. forget when we first met on that sort of discovery, we did those soil tests and explained you what we could do. And hmm. I do remember you saying, I said, look, you know, put it on as part of the program, eight weeks, come back, give it eight weeks, hmm. and then start to till it. I'll never forget when you rang me afterwards, what you said, I can't remember the exact words. Do you remember? Yeah, I think I, I said to him, I said, I don't know what you've done there, but. I said, it's just like somebody had melted the paddock. That's what it was like. I had this, this tractor, I had a big triple K and I could only pull it at about seven Ks an hour. And eight weeks later, I went into it and same tractor, same revs, 10 Ks an hour. Yeah. And the, like it just, it was just like someone had gone in, just melted the paddock. Yeah, yeah it was, uh, it got me going there. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, um, the natural one was a good part of the program, but we also brought in some other things like sulfate of potash, and then we yeah. did that. Um, I got John to do that fertigation. Yeah. That was a good advantage for yeah, you as well. Yeah, well, we had that. We had the, yep. we had a fertiliser injector, but we, yep. we weren't using it properly until you worked out for us how much potash yep. we were taking off the ground. And because with liquid fertilisers, you can put it back. Yep. And that's what keeps your yield up. Yeah. Keeps the yeah. plant up, cuts your spraying by 70%. Yeah. The healthier the plant. When uh, we've been there, you've said, said to me, I think um, everyone else in the district's already spraying for their thrips and other insects, yeah. and you can leave it till quite late, and then just come in and do the one or two, 
yep. for the year, whereas the average here is about um, eight sprays yeah. on the district. I mean, everybody laughed at us when we went to silage. Mm. It didn't take long to work out that it was better than doing dry hay for us. When we did the silage, you had the silage operation, but you also did the trading of the cattle. Mm. We got you doing that backgrounding, so if there wasn't a value in the silage being sold, you'd buy the cattle and feed the cattle and make your money that way. So it was about being adaptable. Oh, yeah. And being able to sell at the right price at the right time rather than being a price taker. We never took a price ever. We yeah. put a price on it, said yeah. feed central, that's the money, don't ring me unless you can get it. Yeah. And I'd work the price out by, by the conversion rate back into cattle. Yep. So if it was worth 210 bucks a ton or 180 or 90 yep. a ton to convert it, yep. no point selling it to them for less. They still sell 80,000 bucks a year worth of silage for yeah. us. Which is Which still incredible. It was uh, all right. Yeah.